Um, so we have, I think this week uh, we are entering into the one of the most exciting and, and funniest parts in, in programming. Kind of uh, now you know different ways of how to uh, manipulate data and how, how to do different kind of operations, but you at this far we have only kind of seeing tables of numbers and not nothing visual about it. So this week we will kind of take the skills that we have learned this far and actually make some nice visualizations and see how to create different kind of plots, well, at least line plots, but in the exercise you will learn uh, a little bit different ways of doing different visualizations as well. Uh, and maybe we could start, so we have this kind of uh, overview here. Uh, we will start by introducing you a little bit different uh, tools in, in Python that can be used to do visualizations. Uh, as said, Python is uh, this kind of generic framework. There are hundreds, well, there are so many developers uh, doing programming and, and developing tools for Python, meaning that we also have many different kind of tools to actually do the visualizations. Uh, and we will start by kind of giving a short overview of different uh, tools that you can use to do plotting and visualizations in Python. Then we go to uh, see a little bit of anatomy of, of a plot. So what kind of elements there are uh, in, in, a, in a plot that you can usually manipulate and, and, and visualize. Then we uh, start the actual kind of visualization uh, part of this lesson doing some basic plotting with matplotlib. And then uh, there is an optional kind of uh, section in the materials here. We won't cover it during the lesson, but you can go and see how to kind of create an interactive plots based on the, the stuff that we do today uh, during the lesson. Uh, but what we will do, so that was an optional one, but then we will see how to use pandas to directly create uh, plots. Uh, and then we have the exercise seven, which should be quite motivating part. We will go through that uh, in the end of, of this lesson. But if we move forward, so in here we kind of introduce you to a different uh, plotting libraries of, of Python. Uh, the kind of grand old man of Python plotting is this matplotlib uh, uh, library or module in, in Python, which is kind of, uh, it's the Python version of MATLAB. So it has similar kind of uh, uh, syntax that, that MATLAB has, but, but it, it is an already quite, uh, quite old and, and this kind of uh, stable, really good plotting library uh, that, that we will use in the beginning. And then quite many different plotting libraries such as Seaborn and this matplotlib base map, which <coughs> can be used to create maps. So they are built on top of this map, matplotlib. But then uh, there are also other ones. There is this bokeh, which is a kind of a newer uh, library uh, that can be due to create quite nice interactive uh, web uh, plots and maps as well. Uh, they are kind of interactive, but static, so they don't really work well with databases that you would get data from a database and, and basically plot those kind of things. But it, it's this kind of still nice uh, library to, for example, if you would have a plot in your master's thesis or in my case, PhD thesis. So kind of if you have, have some visualization, so you could put on GitHub a page where, where the same visualization would be interactive basically. So uh, we will use Poke uh, more in the GIS course later on. So we will create 
uh, interactive maps uh, using this library and, and see how we can actually publish them on, on the web using the GitHub repositories that, that we, we have used <coughs> during, the, during the course. Uh, then there is Plotly, uh, which is a kind of this kind of modern plotting library. Um, you can do all sorts of interactive uh, plots with it. Uh, there is also a link to the gallery. Uh, then there is this new, really, really cool uh, Python framework for building analytical web applications called Dash. This is something quite nice because basically if doing like real web applications before uh, this kind of Dash or Shiny in R, you needed to kind of write some front-end code with JavaScript and you have had some uh, kind of uh, this kind of application layer written with Python or Java for example and then you have the back end. So this Dash is this kind of framework for Python where you actually do all your stuff with Python and then you have a really cool uh, web applications uh, for you to use. There are for quite many nice examples in the website here. Uh, I can maybe show you an example. For example, this uh, Uber rides. So this was all of this. This is really interactive and it basically works uh, using a database or in this case, I think this just uses a CSV data. But all of this is really interactive and looks nice. And, and, and this was all written in using, using Python, nothing else, no JavaScript or any, any other languages. So this is quite, quite neat. Neat thing. Uh, let's see where did or, Yeah, so that's good. Uh, well, if you are familiar with ggplot in R, uh, it's also available for for Python. Uh, there are, yeah, if, if you're interested, you can use that. Uh, then there are Holoviews and GeoViews, which are also uh, quite new ones to create this kind of interactive stuff on, on the web. So as you can see, there are many different tools that you can start to learn and, and do stuff, but <laughs> I would suggest that you stick with one first and it's good to maybe start with this matplotlib and I'm doing plotting with pandas, doing static stuff and then move to the more interactive uh, plottings and, and so on because they tend to get a bit more complicated to do and, and so on. So, uh, so I really recommend you to check these different uh, libraries or modules and, and kind of see the galleries and examples from the web and, and see just like what what is possible to do with these these tools. So that is always the best place to start when doing visualization. Get some motivation from somewhere. Usually there are some example codes how to create certain type of visualization. Just copy and paste that code into your own computer and start playing around with, with those codes. Try to make a small edits and modifications to the plots and so on and that is how basically you learn and that is how I, I have learned all the all the stuff uh, when doing plots so by examples cool uh, then then we have the anatomy of plot so what actually makes makes a visualization or, or plot. So uh, first of all, there are many different kind of uh, visualizations available. There is a list of few more most maybe typical ones that are, I guess, quite <coughs> familiar for you as well. So we have bar charts, we can have histogram, scatter plot, line chart, pie chart, uh, box plots. Uh, then there are some maybe a bit more exotic, like violet blood. Maybe, if, let's see if the link works still, I hope so. So we can have this kind of 
visualization, which is pretty interesting way of visualizing data. Uh, then we can have dendrograms, chord diagrams. These are also pretty cool. Cool. Uh, so you can do basically these kind of visualizations. Uh, and they are quite neat. They are maybe a bit difficult to understand. Uh, or that is at least my kind of experience when doing these kind of plots. So actually when I show these to people, they are first like cool. But then like when they try to understand it, then it get, gets a bit tricky. But what you can do with these kind of plots is basically to show connections, for example, movements between places, as, as I have done research on, on mobility issues. So this is kind of nice play, way to visualize movement between places or con any kind of connections. It can be trades between countries or, or whatever. So this is pretty neat need but maybe a bit challenging to understand uh, but yeah th so there are examples of of these kind of plots that are fairly uh, uh, family or fairly common to see when doing doing science and and, and, and this kind of uh, visual work uh, then here we have a, this kind of really basic uh, line plot and, and there are, we can take a look. So what kind of elements do we have in a plot? Uh, of course, I guess most of you have already done some kind of uh, graphs and plots. So you, you know uh, the basic things that there are. But what, what is good thing to kind of know and, and take a look at this figure is that what are the actual terms that are used to call different stuff on the on a plot? Of course, we know the axes, but how do you call like these things here that are ticks, or or these ones here grid lines? The text here is usually called annotation, and and so on. So so basically, this uh, figure is just to give you basic idea of the term terminology. Of, of, of the different components of, of, of a plot. Uh, but if we go through, so of course, yeah, we have here the y-axis and then we have the x-axis. Uh, typically, you have some kind of information what the axis represents. So we have the y-label here and then we have the x-label that is over here. Then we have the tick-label. So these kind of, uh, well, ticks, uh, are typically called ticks in, in, in when searching for information like how do I change the se sequence of ticks so you know to use that kind of word when searching for information from, from the web. Then we have a legend of course uh, and then typically if you do some kind of this where you compare two lines to each other you might use some kind of filling between uh, and, and so on. Then if you are kind of um, want to uh, specify or modify uh, the distance between uh, for example this label and the axis here. So all those kind of distances are usually called padding. So just that you kind of, I guess those were the most, well and then we have a title here. Uh, but these are the most typical kind of terms that you you will see when when doing uh, visualizations and when you start finding finding information from the web. So you can take a look at this, and 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 there is also a list of list of the terminology in in, in this this page. Uh, so yeah. I wonder where did the day went because now it would be his turn. Uh, but basically what we will now start doing. There it comes. It's your turn. So what we will start doing is to learn <coughs> how to do really basic plotting first using this matplotlib uh, library that that is kind of uh, 
it's under there and it's uh, under pandas for example uh, and it's really good to know how that kind of functions because many things are related to the functioning of matplotlib uh, when we are proceeding with with plotting it with pandas but yeah perfect time and i could yeah. change to you okay and uh is this i guess that's on yeah um yeah so i had this feeling i should come back um and yeah what we're going to focus on now is learning a little bit about how to plot with matlab matplotlib uh, which is essentially built to operate in many ways like the plotting does in matlab uh, so if you've done anything with matlab before uh, you'll see that there's some similarities here in terms of how to generate plots with matplotlib if you haven't don't worry because you don't need to know matlab to know how to do this but uh yeah for this part of the lesson we're going to start and we're going to use the same data file that we used in lesson five uh, which was one month of daily observations of temperature from the kumpula um, station here uh, on this campus and the data file, there's a link to it right in the top of this part of the lesson here. So you should download a copy of this data file. Uh, easiest thing to do here is just right click on it and then save link as or whatever the equivalent is in the web browser you're using. Hmm? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's uh hard to hear from this side. Um, so yeah, you can save a copy of the data file and just put it you know, somewhere. I'm going to put it in my home directory like I normally do. And uh, <coughs> if you have any problems with getting the data file, for instance, just let uh, Hendrik be know. As mentioned, it's this temperature data mean, minimum, and maximum temperatures for all the days of June of the year 2016. And uh, also we're going to be working in Spider for this part of the lesson, so I'm going to go here and, uh, and open up Spider um, from a terminal window. So you should do those two things in order to get started here. I guess maybe I'll uh, unlock this other computer and uh, just pull up the lesson here. Okay, so if you've downloaded the data file and you've opened up Spider, the first thing that I think I'm going to have you do, if you've not done this previously, is to go into the Spider preferences and set Spider up so that when we start doing our data plots, they pop up in a separate window rather than showing up in the IPython console. There's nothing wrong with having them show up down here. It just makes it a little bit easier to interact with them when they pop up in a separate window. But that's not the default behavior in, um, in Spider for whatever reason. So if you're a Mac user, you can go here to where it says Python and, uh, and then go to Preferences. If you're using Windows or Linux, I think you go to Tools and then Preferences or Tools, Options, something like that. Um, I guess it's tools preferences and if you open that up you'll get this um, preference window that comes up and where we want to go is the thing here for the IPython console so if you click on that uh, to select it you can then go to the graphics tab up at the top and most likely you have the back end set to inline so down here in the middle of the window, under graphics, back end's probably set to inline. It should be set to automatic. And um, 
I've already done this, so that's what mine is set to, but um, that's what you should do. It's also described in the lesson materials online, so uh, you can read through that if this is in any way confusing. Once you set that preference, though, you do have to restart Spider in order for the plotting to work so that it plots in a separate window. So uh, I'm not going to do that since I'm already set up, but uh, you will need to to restart Spider. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to basically read in this data file we downloaded in the same way we normally do it in Pandas. And uh, then we're going to load this matplotlib plotting library or plotting module and, uh, and get straight to making a plot. So the way to get started here is, since we're going to use pandas to read in our data file, we're going to have to import pandas as pd. So kind of the normal way that we would do that. And I think we'll work at least uh, for this starting part of the lesson just here in the IPython console. So import pandas, and then we're going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT. So this is perhaps the most obvious case we've encountered so far about why you want to rename something when you import it because having to type matplotlib.pyplot every time you want to use one of the commands that's part of that module would be uh, a serious pain. So uh, that will hopefully not cause any errors or anything like that. Um, if you have any problems, again, Hendrik is just uh, anxiously awaiting his opportunity to help you. Um, but that's all we've done. We've just brought in this, this plotting library for matplotlib, and, uh, and now we need to load our data file. And we'll do it the same way that we did before, um, where we say data frame equals pd.read csv. So this is that function that we've used previously to read in a comma separated value file. Uh, then we can give the name of the file. And I'm going to just hit tab to autocomplete that name because it's, uh, it's in my working directory. So rather than have to type that in, I'll do it this way. And as you might remember from that lesson five, there's some metadata at the top of the file. We want to skip the top eight rows of the file. So we're going to do skip rows equals eight. So we just pd.readcsv, the file name of the data file that you've hopefully downloaded, and then skip rows eight so that we skip the metadata at the top of the file. Hopefully, that also doesn't cause any problems for you. And uh, just to remind ourselves what's here, we can just take a look at data frame dot columns. And so here we see we've got an index um, of the different columns. We've got this year, month, day column, temperature, then the max and the min for each one of those days. So um, we've seen this data file before. We don't need to look in detail, but just to remember what the names of some of the variables are here. And so now we can kind of take a step toward making a plot. And we're going to use this uh, line plotting in matplotlib. It uses a function called plot. And plot expects to have typically uh, an x value, so whatever should be on the x-axis, and then the y value for whatever should go on the y-axis. And um, it's not a requirement to do this, but I just usually like to define those variables because it makes it easier to see what I'm plotting. So we're going to set x equal to data frame year mo da, so year month day. And so what we want to have then on the horizontal axis will be time. That uh, is very often the case for these kind of data sets that you'll have time on the, the x-axis. And then for the y-axis, we'll do data frame temp. 
And again, I'm just hitting tab to autocomplete some of these names just because it's easier than typing the whole thing in. Um, it's a good trick to get used to doing uh, to save a bit of time. To do the autocomplete? Yeah. yeah. So like if you start typing in um, Y equals D A T and you can hit the tab key. If there's any other, you know, if there's anything unique to finish the rest of that variable name with, it will automatically fill that in for you. Otherwise, it will give you a list of the options, and you can use the arrow keys to select one of the things um, to automatically complete it. For certain things like file names, it's really handy because that's a place where a lot of times you don't remember whether you did underscores or hyphens to separate different words or capital or lowercase. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a useful uh, little trick. Um, so we've defined x, we've defined y, and now we'll just do plt.plot of x comma y. So uh, fairly intuitive in terms of what we're going to do. Um, and when you hit enter, most of you will probably get a window that pops up automatically that should look something like this. Is there anyone who's not had the window automatically pop up? Yeah, if you keep you didn't uh, update the inline to automatic from the preference system, it will end up in your iPython console. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so if, if you didn't change anything with the spider preferences, you'll see the plot down here. Um, I'm going to maybe make this not quite full window. Anyway, so here we see along the horizontal axis we have time. Well, we haven't really dealt with time formatting very nicely. Uh, so what you see is the values go from 0 to 30. Okay, well, that's roughly the range of the number of days in June, and then you see this plus 2.01606E7. It's just been read in as a number, and if we read the numbers of the days in June, it would be 2016, 0, 06, 0, and then 1 through 30. So um, we'll deal with how to make the, to handle dates a little bit more elegantly in uh, the stuff that, that Hendrick will introduce about plotting with pandas. On the horizontal axis, we have temperatures, and uh, obviously these temperatures, based on the range of values, um, are still in Fahrenheit, not converted to Celsius or anything like that. But yeah, we, we have it, and, uh, and what we've done, I think, is fairly straightforward at this point to create this plot. I'm going to close the window. Um, We'll talk about some of the things you can do with that plot window in just a minute. But uh, as you might notice, you know, the plot is, well, the data's there. It's not necessarily complete. So uh, let's try again here. We'll do a plt.plot again of x comma y. And now I'm going to give a little bit of formatting information about how I'd like my plot to appear. And I'm going to do it in what I hope will become familiar uh, a way in the shorthand of matplotlib by putting R, the letter O, and then two hyphens, two dashes. And this is just telling us how to display the data that's going to be plotted. In this case, the, the letter R indicates the color red. Um, there's a number of different single letters that can be used, B for blue, K for black, uh, G for green, and so on. The O here says I want to use circles to plot the data points. So before all we have is a line, um, and I want to now use circles to show where the data points are, and then this double dash says I want to have a dashed line. So we'll see what this looks like in just a second. Uh, in fact, probably we'll see it uh, as soon as I hit enter here. That now I see my 
same data, just looks a little bit different. And uh, there's a link in the, um, the materials for this lesson that takes you to the documentation on this plt.plot where it explains what these different things are, what the different symbols you can use are, and how to use them. Uh, rather than go through that, that exhaustively, I'll just let you take a look at it because once you figure out this idea of how to do the formatting, it's easy to change the colors, it's easy to change the symbols, uh, to do solid lines or no line. Um, so like, you know, let's say I wanted to make the same plot without a line. I just take away the double dash and, uh, well, I think I've, I've got to close my plot window first. But now I get my data points without the line connecting them. Since this is time series data, it doesn't make a great deal of sense to not have a line connecting these points because they are connected to one another. Uh, so in this instance, I wouldn't suggest doing this. Um, although maybe you could see that, you know, on average temperatures in June are increasing from looking at the data here. If you were to fit some regression line through there, you'd see that it shows temperatures increasing in June, which you know we're all hoping for whenever June comes around. Uh, so anyway, we have our plot here, the one that's open, and uh, we can add a couple other things here. We can do plt.title, good thing to do. Say what's on your plot, and let's say uh, cumpula temperatures in June 2016 or whatever you want I mean you can you know type in my dog likes cat food or whatever uh, you know it's just to kind of show you how it works but when I hit enter here um, and I go back to find my plot window I see now that I have a title displayed on on the plot and I'm just going to tuck this over here to make it easier to find we can also add axis labels, as you might imagine. So we can have an X label. And uh, this is just like a function. And uh, in this case, we know that our horizontal axis, our X axis, is the date. So we can make our X label be date. And we can also make a Y label that is the temperature. And uh, I'm going to put degrees Fahrenheit because I know how to do that. I don't know how to do that on Windows or Linux, but if you're on a Mac, you can do Option, uh, I think it's Option Shift 8. That'll make the degree sign. So uh, if you deal with temperatures like I do frequently, that's a shortcut you learn. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can just put Fahrenheit or F or whatever you want. But if you put in this X and Y label, just like you would expect, you go back to your plot and now you see that your axes are labeled. And uh, so that's nice. Now, I didn't really plan to do this and I don't want to take much time to do it, but since it's here, does everybody have this little button up here in their matplotlib? Window, at least for those of you who had it pop up in a separate window, do you have this thing that looks like an option to configure your plot? I think it's, uh, it's actually, sorry, it's the one that looks like it's sort of, you know, how most businesses want their stocks to go. Uh, this arrow climbing up like this, or you know, employee productivity or whatever in the business world they use. Um, if you click on that, you can actually edit some of these properties directly in the matplotlib lib uh, window. So you can change the date label, for instance, to be, you know, date, you know, poorly formatted or whatever you want, you know, to make some sort of not really that funny joke. Um, or change the scale of your axis between log scale and linear scale. Um, you can go in and change the colors of your lines. So if you decide like, well, ours kind of nice, but I think I like the hex color FF6666, uh, which is my you know, personal favorite for red, is the sort of pastel red. Uh, so you can modify 
the colors there. You also have the option of doing the edge color. So that's if you want to trace the outside of your symbol. You could make that be all zeros, which is the hex for black. So if you want to customize your plot a little bit, in some ways this is an easy place to do it. You can also change your symbol size or your symbols in here. So you say, well, you know, circles are too old-fashioned for me, so I want to use uh, thin diamonds. And then I'll hit apply, and now I get my nice diamond symbols. And uh, and whatever you can change symbol size, all that stuff. You can do this when you make the plot command, but for some of these things, it's easier just to to mess with it in here. Uh, and you can do it directly within the matplotlib, matplotlib window. This isn't described in the lesson, but it's just something that I came across at some point and, uh, and realized it's in some ways easier to do tinkering with the colors of your symbols and things like that here uh, if you're someone like me who is very particular about colors. Um, that's what I would end up doing. So, uh, so there we have our plot. And, uh, and again, you can check out the link in the lesson about how to do some of these other uh, formatting things um, in, in Matplotlib, like if you want to specify a certain symbol when you make the plot. Um, that's described with the documentation for Matplotlib online. Another common thing that you're going to do or want to do is to add text to a figure. So maybe have some text somewhere here in within the uh, box of things that are being plotted. Um, so we can take a point somewhere up here, for instance, uh, where we might say, you know, that this is the highest temperature in early June. And uh, so this is somewhere about the maybe 4th or 5th of June and uh, about 68 degrees for the temperature. The plt.text command allows you to place text somewhere within the plot window. And it expects you to give an X and a Y coordinate for where that text should go. And it should be in the range of values that are plotted. So for instance here, the 4th of June is not going to be at X equals 4, but it's going to be at X equals 2016-06-04 because we have our date still in that format. So when we say the X position, I'm going to say 2016, month of June, fourth day. And then the Y value should be some temperature. I know it's about 68 degrees in that case. So I'll put 68. So here I'm just saying X location, Y location. And then after that, some text I want to have displayed. In this case, I'm going to say high temperature in early June. So this plt.txt sometimes causes a little bit of trouble just because you have to remember that you're always dealing with placing the text where it's going to start writing the text that you're, you're placing that point with the x and y coordinates that are given here. Again, if you hit enter you should hopefully see something like this show up on your plot, that now there's some text on the figure at this location that says high temp in early June. You could have written, again, anything you want there. Um, but that's just to kind of show you how, how that works. Now, to show you one other thing that's, uh, that's kind of handy, um, we can show you this, how to change the range of the values that are shown in the plot. By default, Matplotlib picks the best kind of round numbers to display the data within the plot. Um, so here we know the temperatures are going to go from about 50 degrees up to maybe 70 degrees uh, based on the data that's going to be plotted, and Matplotlib automatically sets the range for the axes. You don't always want that. Um, so here we can modify that using the plt.axis function. And plt.axis expects a Python list of the coordinates that define the axes. So remember that Python lists are given with these square brackets. 
And the format that it expects is whatever the minimum x value should be, then comma, the maximum x value, comma, minimum y, comma, maximum y. So for our dates, let's say that we only care about the second half of June. So we'll say 2016-06-15. So we'll start from the 15th of June, and we'll go all the way to the end of June. So that's 2016-06-30. Again, we'll come to dealing with dates a little bit nicer, uh, or more nicely uh, in the future. But that's our X range. So from the 15th to the 30th of June is what we want to see. And for the temperature range, we'll say maybe uh, 55 degrees for the minimum temperature and 70 degrees for the maximum temperature. And I know that just from having looked at the plot before. So when I hit enter here, it's going to change the range of values that are shown on the plot here. And right away, you see that now instead of starting at 0, we start at 15, and we go to 30. And we see some of the good and bad things here. Well, the bad thing is that obviously our symbol is now kind of halfway chopped off because we start exactly at 15. So if you care about that value, you as the user have to think a little bit about maybe adding a little, you know, maybe you want to start from the 14th of June so you can see the, the point for the 15th clearly uh, or whatever. We've also lost our text because when we jump to only have the 15th through the 30th of June, we lost our uh, reference point for the 4th of June that was where we had defined the text before. So now that's been clipped out of the figure. But, uh, but yeah, here we have just a simple example of how to use the axis command. And most of the time for what you guys plot, the default axis values will be okay. But uh, there will be a case like in the exercise, actually for, for both of the problem uh, two and three in the exercise this week, you're going to want to set the axes yourself because uh, we're going to have data from different areas um, that are going to be plotted where we want to maybe have the same axis range for all of the plots. And uh, in, the, in the other case, you'll make a series of plots that can be animated where you want to have the same axis range so that when you have the animation, it's not like changing the range of values every time you change from one plot to the next. Uh, you can do that, but it just, people won't like you if you do that. Uh, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, well, people might like you, I don't know, but I wouldn't do that. So, uh, anyway, we have our, our clipped out plot at this point. And I'm going to show you one other thing about plotting uh, here. So we've seen how to do line plots. Line plots are nice most of the time, actually. That's the, the most common plot you're going to deal with. Um, but, you know, we can deal with other things like bar plots as well. Uh, the documentation for matplotlib is quite um, maybe comprehensive is a good word. Uh, overwhelming is a word you might also use. Uh, it's really can do a lot of stuff, but as a result, very uh, sometimes not so easy to get into. But we'll start here with a new type of plot called the bar plot, plt.bar. Again, pretty intuitive name, and we'll do x comma y just like we did before. Uh, I'm going to close my plot window now, uh, just because. We haven't explicitly asked to make a new plot window, and this will then try to plot things in the same window as before, and uh, that won't look very nice. But if you do plt.bar, you should get something that looks like this, where now bar charts or bar graphs like this, by default, will start at zero. And so that's a case where maybe we're going to want to play with the axes because most of what we're concerned with is the variation in temperature up here, not between 0 and 50 degrees where nothing happens. And we could go through and do the same series of things, add axis labels, add plot title, stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go up here to where I just defined the axis by just pushing the up key twice since we defined the axis range before. 
we'll just define the same axis range for this plot that we've just created. And I've got to go find my plot window hiding back here. And now things look maybe a little bit better, more consistent with what we had before. For different types of data, of course, you are going to want to use different ways to visualize that data. And as much as we would like to spend time talking about that here, um, you know, that would be a course on its own to talk about effective ways to visualize the data. Um, but, you know, this bar plot in this case for showing changes in temperature day to day, I would say is just as effective as the line graph. The only thing that you gain with the line graph is that you can see the steepness of the curve to kind of see how much the temperature changes day to day. You don't necessarily see that, although you can certainly visually see big changes in temperature just by the differences in, in lengths of the bars. Um, so that's you know kind of what we have at this point. The last thing I want to show you is that uh, you can save your plots very easily from matplotlib just by clicking on this little diskette icon uh, for save the figure. And what it's going to ask you is where do you want to put it? I'm going to leave it in my home directory. Uh, what do I want to call it? Well, let's uh, hopefully I can give it a better name like uh, bar graph dot png in this case. If you click down at the bottom for the list of different uh, file formats, you'll see there are many different options. There's JPEG files, um, and PDF, PNG, and other kinds of TIFF images, whatever you like. Um, it exports to a number of pretty common data fo file formats and uh, in most cases looks pretty nice. So we'll leave it as PNG because those are nice and, uh, and I'll hit save and I'll get an error message uh, because it tried to save in a place where it can't. Um, so I'll click on my home directory first and then give it a file name bar graph. Uh, I must have clicked somewhere else. So then I save that, and now I should go, if I look in my home directory um, here, I see my bar graph.png file. And if I just double click on it, then sure enough, it looks just like my matplotlib window did before. So um, maybe what we can do is we're basically done with our introduction to plotting with matplotlib. Uh, there is a little activity here that is linked in the lesson uh, about plotting like the quote-unquote pros because we're, well, I guess being somewhat humble. Um, so let me scroll down to that so you can see what it looks like here. So the reason we want to introduce you to matplotlib is, is twofold. One is that it's hiding out behind how you do plotting in pandas. So you can plot things directly in pandas, but if you want to do any formatting, you do it in the matplotlib way because pandas is using matplotlib in the background to create the plots. But the other reason we wanted to introduce you to this is that matplotlib has this plot gallery online. And the cool thing is that you can look at the different styles of plots, but you can also see the code that was used to produce the plot. So I'm going to go there to this plot gallery now. And uh, what you see there is if you scroll through, there's a whole series of different styles of plots. If you're looking for a way to create some sort of plot and you're just like, I don't know how to even get started, this is a great place to go to get started because you can find the code to make the plot and then start modifying it in some way. Um, we had fun with this last year, so I'm going to do this one. Um, but if I click on, on the image, I see the plot that should be produced. In this case, it's just going to plot a, a PNG file and the code that was used to make that plot. And I'm going to just copy that code, go over here to Spider, and uh, I'm just going to overwrite what we had here before. So I'm just pasting this in. And when I run it, uh, I get an indentation error. That's probably... Why is that? Uh, 
one extra comma in the first line. Ah, oops. Right. Okay. And just as expected, we get the plot of this person. So last year I said this was some unusual looking person uh, because I didn't know who it was. But it turns out this is a quite famous computer scientist named Grace Hopper. And um, the thing that uh, she's probably most famous for is at some point she had a discussion with one of her higher ups in the military about wanting to be able to get information from someone in the field up to a satellite and back to another person at some kind of command center in as little time as possible. And uh, the expectation was that this should take you know, a tenth of a second to transmit this information back and forth. And uh, she rather um, brightly noted that information travels at the speed of light, and if it travels at the speed of light, then you can measure out some distance of how far something should travel in a nanosecond, and you can figure out then, based on how far away a satellite is, how long the information, just if it's tr only being transmitted at the speed of light, should take to go to the satellite and come back down to someone in the field. And, um, and so I think she started... Uh, making these little pieces of, of rope or wire that were about just under 30 centimeters long. That is, the distance information can travel in one nanosecond. And so she would go around and, you know, whenever she talked to people about uh, this kind of fundamental idea of data transfer, she would hand out these little pieces of wire that uh, would allow you to easily visualize how long one nanosecond is. And from that, you can sort of very easily think that if a satellite is quite some distance away, um, you know, that, that sets a bound on the sort of minimum time required to transmit uh, any kind of information. And so she quickly told her commanding officer or whoever that uh, what they were asking for was, was basically impossible based on the laws of physics. So uh, it turns out to be kind of a quite interesting individual. If you're curious, you can look up Grace on uh, YouTube and find a number of like appearances on talk shows. Um, had quite an interesting personality and fun person to sort of uh, to see um, in action. So uh, maybe it doesn't interest you at all, but I learned something from the Matplotlib uh, plotting gallery that I did not expect to learn. So uh, so there you go. Anyway, um, what you can do if you want is we'll probably take a 10 minute break now and uh, we can do two things. If you want to play with the Matplotlib gallery, now is a good time to just kind of test out and see how that works and we can, can help out if you get stuck. But the other thing is that we have a bunch of stuff down here from this GitHub organization. They send out stuff to educational groups who use their, um, their resources in, in courses. So we have uh, copies of the amazing Robo Patchers GitHub comic series. If you're really looking to demonstrate how uh, how sophisticated you are, um, you can bring home a new comic book. But there's also some really neat, uh, at least to me, um, some cute little GitHub stickers. And this year they sent us a really nice variety of different stickers. So if you're looking for something that, that matches your personality and your desire to express your love for, for GitHub, um, you can do that down here. There's also some little books about like uh, markdown syntax and stuff like that that this might be handy references, mm -hmm. as well as some posters. Yeah. Um, so if you really want to show the world how much you care about GitHub, you you have that opportunity now. So we'll take ten minutes and uh, well, maybe we'll let the kind of show you you know what the possibilities are here. Uh, maybe we need two people for this. Huh. But this could be yours. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it's, it's first come, first serve. So come on down, and uh, we'll, we'll get back in 10 minutes with the lessons.